So Colin and I um, put our heads together to decide whether there was a study that we could do to help us to understand a bit more about why women are not managing to take this medication. And I'm, I'm what you would call a qualitative researcher, which means I like talking to people. I am not very good at statistics, and um, I like to just kind of get more of people's experience and try and work out what the similarities are across groups and uh, between individuals and, and what makes it difficult for women to take their, their medication. That's what I wanted to know. So what did we do? Well, I persuaded Colin, who is a statistician and does like numbers, that we should interview these women. We interviewed 30 women. Um, we interviewed them either in their own homes or in a university setting, depending on where they were most comfortable. And we, the interviews lasted about an hour. Uh, we recorded the interviews and then we, we got them transcribed, which means typed up, and um, then we used that to analyse the data. Now, I wasn't planning to go into the analysis here, but if anyone's interested, I can, I can talk about that later. Um, we also, the, the women that we talked to were based, the, they were attending follow-up appointments at either Perth Royal Infirmary or Nine Wells Hospital um, between January and sort of May last year, so it's quite a recent study really. Um, and we were interested in looking at different groups of women. So we wanted younger women, that was those under 50. We wanted women aged sort of 50 to 64. And we were looking also for women aged 64 and above to participate in the trial. We wanted women who were taking different medications, so we needed some to be taking tamoxifen, some to be taking letrozole, some to be taking anastrozole, and we needed them to be taking them over different periods of time. So it's, it's prescribed over five years, so we got quite a good range of, of um, women participating. What we also really, really wanted as well was women who could maybe say that they had stopped taking the medication or were having difficulty but at the recruitment stage, that actually proved very difficult. We did try to make it, our recruitment as non-judgmental as possible. So we were going along to these clinics, which were either oncology clinics or surgical clinics. And um, generally, breast cancer is followed up on a yearly basis. So women either went to a surgical clinic or an oncology clinic. And we approached them and said we were really interested in their experience of taking these medications. Would they mind talking to us? Um, but as I say, we didn't really get to the bottom of maybe those who would admit that they hadn't taken them at that point. But there's more to the story as we, as we move on. So that's basically what we did. We talked to women. Um, and so what did we find? Well, I suppose we went into this to try and work out how we could increase um, the number of women who were taking the medication over the five-year course. What we found was that the women we interviewed were absolutely sure that they wanted to take this medication, they wanted to take it as prescribed, and they wanted to take it for the five years. And the reason they wanted to do that was that they very much believed that, that this was a way of reducing the risk of recurrence. They trusted the doctors, the doctors would prescribe this because they were effective medications, and they felt that this was a role that they could play in um, their own treatment. So it was the next phase of treatment. If they'd undergone surgery and potentially chemotherapy and radiotherapy, then they weren't going to stop um, taking a tablet if that was also going to be part of their treatment. So that was, that, that was good. That was good news for us, we thought. That was, that was good. The second um, main point was that, as I said, we were hoping that we would find that women would say, actually, I've really struggled with this and I don't actually take it. But initially what we found was that all of the 30 women that we interviewed were absolutely adamant that they took it every day as prescribed. <coughs> now one of the beautiful things about qualitative research is that while you're talking with women, you, you can explore different avenues, you can go back and just sort of talk to them about what they've said. And, and this is what happened in these interviews. And actually women, by the time we were sort of partway through the interview, were actually saying, well actually, Maybe I do miss one or two tablets quite often. Um, and yeah, maybe I, I kind of did stop them for a while because I was experiencing some difficult side effects and, and I didn't really go and speak to the doctor. And we, ha we had a number of women who, um, because the, the medication is sometimes prescribed at the same time as radiotherapy, 
Some women weren't sure whether the side effects or the symptoms they had were just left over from the sort of radiotherapy effects or whether they were the medication. So they might stop them for a while without asking and talking to anyone in the sort of health professional about this, just to see if the side effects went to me and then most of them restarted. There was other groups of women who knew that they were coming for a follow-up appointment in weeks or months from, from the time that they decided to stop it because of the side effects. And there was another group of women who um, stopped the medication with advice. So we're already looking at three groups of women who potentially might have been described as, as non-adherent, which means they didn't take them as prescribed. Um, but um, what we found was that those women who stopped the medication when they talked to health professionals and were advised to do so, they restarted the medication. Their medication might be changed to something different. It was just they needed that opportunity to talk about it. And the group of women who stopped were actually the group of women when they spoke to a health professional who were advised they were at low, low risk. So in our group, about a third of the participants admitted to either missing or stopping for a brief period of time or stopping completely. Now, this, one, of the, one of the challenges of measuring whether women take medication all the time or not is how you count it. So we wonder if the, actually more women are in, ad, adherent to their medication than some of the statistics would, would have suggest because they're maybe missing a few but actually going back onto it again. So that's maybe something we can talk about in the questions.